All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular the AWD 1100 C Sharp Programming Fundamentals class, I've been doing a series of video presentations based on both the um, PowerPoint slides for the book used for the class, which is Muroc C Sharp 2015, and I've been doing some based on a mythical payroll application that I'm creating both in console and GUI formats. So far, I have done the first seven chapters. So I'm up to chapter eight, how to use arrays and collections. As I've already looked, and there's 68 um, slides in here, I know that I won't finish this in one presentation. All right, or at least I'm fairly certain I won't. So, as I have been doing, I am not going to sit and read the objectives to you, but in this chapter, we are going to talk about arrays, how you create arrays, how you manipulate arrays, <clears throat> how you use arrays in a program, etc. <clears throat> Now, the first thing I'm going to do in here is kind of break away from this and show you an example. All right. I'm going to show you an example of why you might want to use an array. Okay. So let's assume that I have 10 students. In fact, let's, let's assume that I'm working in a class. And in that class, I have, let's say when we start, we have, I have one student. All right, and I want to be able, I just gave that student a test. So I say int student1, we'll call him. All right. Um, and we'll say that their grade was a 77. And that's fine. But let's assume that rather than that, I have 10 students. All right. So I could come in here and say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I'm just going to make up some mythical scores. So they got 21, they got a 92, whoops, 92. They got 100, this was an 87, uh, 91, a 61, a 57, a 99, and another 100. And that's totally fine. So now I've got 10 different students, and I've got 10 different grades. All right? Not a problem. So that's, again, that's all fine. But now let's assume I've got 100 students. I don't really want to do this. All right? But what I could do is I could say int bracket bracket. Oops, not there. Int bracket bracket. And I could call it students equals new int. In fact, I wouldn't even have to do that. I could just come in here and say 77, 100, 99, 57, 61, <clears throat> 91, 87, 100, 92, and 21. Did I miss any? 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight, those are my 10 students, nine, 10. Now that's one way I could do it, okay? I could also come through here and say int bracket bracket students equals new int 10. Then I can come in here and when you're working with arrays, you begin counting at zero, all right? Just so you know that. 
So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to say students, oops, not studnets, students, zero equals 77 students. In fact, let me just do some copying here because I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste your time. So I'm here now, instead of going from 1 to 10, I'm going from 0 to 9. But there are still 10 elements. There's an old programmer's joke that says, ask a programmer to count to 10, and she or he will say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. So 77, 100. 99, 57, 61, 91, 87, 100, 92, and 21. So what I've just shown you here are three different ways I could set this up. Here's the, the non-array method, we'll call it, and it's just 10 different variables. Here, I am both creating an array and initializing it at the same time. Here, I am creating an empty array and then initializing it on my own. All right, now another way that I could do this last way is I could do this. Just like we did, we hit enter a few times here, and then I could come in here and say for for a for loop, else uh, int lcv my loop control variable equals zero. Lcv is less than students dot length. I think that's right. We're going to check that in a bit. Plus plus lcv. And then I could come in here, let's assume that this is a console program. And I could say, um, write line, please enter score for student number. And I would say here, LCV plus one. Now, I don't have to do that. But what's going to happen is if I don't put this in there, the first student will become student 0, which could be confusing. But by saying LCV1, this will say students 1 to 10. All right, so now I can say students LCV equals convert, whoops, I'm sorry, convert dot 2 int 32 read line. Now, I'm, I'm not doing any error checking here. So I'm assuming the person is bright enough to go in and put in integers for those. But what I want you to understand is arrays and loops work hand in hand with one another. So that was just a little intro. So jumping in here now, because I'm already probably five minutes in, nine minutes in, all right? But jumping in here, Here they're showing different ways that you can create arrays. I showed you my own way. You could put it as two different lines or as one line, etc. All right. You can have arrays of basically any type of variable you want. It is even possible to create what's known as an array of arrays. All right. And again, we will be talking about all of this as we go on. Okay? All right. Oops. From the current slide. There we go. Now, notice if I create a brand new array and I don't put values in it, it's automatically initialized to zero. Why is that important? Because right here, this line that line that you see right there in line 20, 
7, it's as though I said this. Now, is that that big a thing? Yeah, it is, because not all languages do this. So what I'm telling you is these two lines are equivalent to one another. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to do this one every time. But in some programming languages, you've got to do it like this. All right? Notice if you create an array of characters, they're automatically set to the null character. If you do Booleans, it's like they're all false. Date, time, they're all set to what? January 1st of the year 1 at midnight. Reference types are set to null, which means unknown. So how do you refer to an individual array element? I've already shown you this. I gave you an example very similar to this example right here. Notice that you're saying that this is an array of four elements, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3. If you try to reference an element that is out of range, as they're showing right here, you will get what's known as an index out of range exception. All right. I've shown you this. There's the length property, so I did goof up should be a capital L. All right. Why should you have to worry about how big an array or something else, you know, uh, something like that is when the system will count it for you? And there's the for loop, very similar to the one I showed you. All right. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with an array. Notice here, this is a good example. Really, what I wish the author whoops, what I wish the author would have done right here and didn't do, I would have done this, but again, you know, I'm sure if the author was here, they'd say, that's fine. When you write your book, then you do it that way. All right? Whoops, I want to come in here. I would have put this in curly braces. It doesn't make the program run any better, but what I'm trying to show you regarding this is this sum is done however many, you know, once for every single array element, but the average is only done when you're all done. All right. So notice what they have here. You've got an array, and here you're figuring out the sum. That's this. Then when you're done, you're doing the average, which was this. Kind of what you'd expect, because 49.8 divided by 4 is 12.45. Okay? Now, there is something special in this language, and I shouldn't really put it that way, because... Most languages have some variation of this, but this is a for each loop. Now, with a for each, it runs a little faster, all right? But what you do here is notice we've got an array, and the array is called totals. So we create, we create a value on the fly called total, and we keep adding that to sum. Now, if you use a for each, it looks a little funky when you first see it, but it has a tendency to work faster than a for loop. But if you use a for each, you, you cannot manipulate the values, so you can't change the values of the array inside of the loop. If you want to do that, you must use a for. Okay? All right. Here's what's called a rectangular array, and I'll tell you what. I'm at 15 minutes, so... Yeah, we haven't gone real far in this, but yet we have. So let's uh, stop right here, and we'll pick it up again right here in part two of this particular lecture.